You're under arrest. Now put up your hands and take off your pants. Wait a minute. Take off your pants and then put up your hands. My favorite sort of stripper acts are, and I think they've held on for decades, are the ones where guys are blue collar or firefighters or policemen or military. For some reason, there's something about that. It's such a straight male job. We are a non-tipping show because we believe if you buy a ticket, everyone's equal. Have a good time with it. We don't want, you know, dollar bills thrown in the faces or the crotches of the guys. It elevates us to a very different level than, and this isn't a put down, but a guy that's working birthday parties or bridal showers or whatever, and is knocking on the hotel room door and is coming in in his policeman outfit and stripping and, and working for tips and stuff. There's been a big complaint in the neighborhood. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that there's all these girls and no naked men. God bless, if, if you're really good at what you do, that's fine. But we are a show, we're not just strippers. On to the next one. Ladies, I have one request tonight. Please touch me. for you, Suntory. Someone wants to know, is this a dangerous lifestyle? Some people might want to make more money and may feel like they have to uh, do certain things. When you're offered a lot of money, you might feel pressured. You're going to eventually, somebody's gonna get a price for you to go against something that you're, you're not. Is he available? Are you available as an escort? Does he do that kind of thing? Lisa wants to know. I do escort. If you're tempted with the right kind of money and you, the right hurdles start to get dropped, well, eventually, people change. What does that mean, you do escort? What, what, do you, what would you do? Hang out with people, go to dinner, like keep a, them like, like a real escort. You're not talking about, so do you do any well, sex what, stuff? Well, what's your definition of a real escort? Because escorting is like, it could be prostitution. That's right. So, just, what, so what do you do? More. Every client wants something different. What do you do? Keep people company. Keep people company, yes. literally. Yes. Some guys would want to just hug you. Some guys will want to touch you and try to, you know, touch your cock or suck you or they ask if they could fuck you or, or you could fuck them or suck them. I'll give you $500 for your G-string and then it's $1,000 for the next thing. And the next thing, <laughs> How the fuck did this happen? So you don't do, you don't escort in the tradition, well, the prostitution side of things. I don't have sex with people. Anything else is fine. I am like a starfish. They can lick my ass, it's okay. Their mouth, wherever is okay. Except on my lips, I don't like that. I don't like it when, when guys kiss me. I guess that's what um, makes me straight. There are actually people who escort without having sex. Wow, okay. Yeah, yeah, because like I, I, I found out you don't have to do that. Money is just money. It comes and goes. It's not worth losing yourself. Oh, yeah. I'll I'll see see you Good, Marshall. How are you doing, mate? Mm. Thunder from down under is a family, you know? Oh, <laughs> so if someone's upset or they're, you know, or they're angry or they're... Anything is they're always they're, they're great to help you get through things, you know. Hey, is this my hat? Yeah, I think mean, this is my yeah, no, that's my, this is my hat. No, yeah, there you go. What do you what? Because I am the king. Woo! Everybody, look at me. Yeah, hey, with well, the two of the three of us, then the other guys are just fillers, you know. They're what fucked. I mean? We go on, and then well, there's a couple of decent guys, but but, but we have to get rid of the roof raft. Hey, they uh, they take who's, spots. Who's we should there? have a meeting tonight, anyways, about uh. Guys wearing shirts on the floor and guys sitting with girls. 
because uh, I'd love to have that meeting because, because guys are sitting down for two or three fucking songs and they're not getting paid for it. And like, too many waiters to... are giving and taking their shirts off. Too many waiters are doing lap dances. Yeah, like what the fuck? Like we're the dancers. They should leave their shirts on. So serve your fucking drinks. Waiters shirts on. Shooter guys tank top. They can lift it up for a body shot. Just lift it up for a second. Not like this whole thing. Dancers shirts off. And I love Matt, but when he's the great white hope and he comes up with no chest, <laughs> no stomach, he's right in your head like this. It's, and his face is all red. It's gross. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah, it's not. It's not cool. We should get him working here. We should get uh, some vodka. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. See you later, Cuban. Hello, vodka. Hello, vodka. Man. I got brought some weed, by the way. And I am. Well, yeah, I'm not doing that one. Okay, no problem. So let's do some weed. I'm not. I'm probably not gonna do that. You're one. probably not gonna do this way. No. No, I'm probably. Maybe. maybe? <laughs> <laughs> no, turned into a yes real quick. Listen, yeah. I'm not taking any yeah. drugs tonight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, done. <laughs> I win. All right, let's go smoke a joint. Yeah, let's yeah. do that. But I've watched you come into your own at the club. You were there for a couple years as a waiter beforehand. So yeah. obviously he had to watch some. How somebody. many years were you So who do you think before? he watched? Gooch? Who do you think he watched? He's modeled himself after me a little bit. I'll admit, when I first started out, Josh, I looked up to you, but I, I surpassed you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we should all know that I've said the mark for 20 years, but 20 years I've been walking around looking like this. You haven't been. Oh, with the old and then with the new, baby. <laughs> I, I don't know very many guys that have stripped for very long. Yeah. It's always like I'll do it for six months, a year, a couple uh, years. I don't know. I've seen, I've seen some strippers that are like my age stripping still, and it's kind of like, wow, he's still up there. There's no one better looking than me. That no one can dance as good as me. No one's as sexy as me. If all these people saying how sexy you are can really eat at someone's ego. You you get bloated with all this ego. No one thrills Every the crowd. Time, dance I'm better curious. than you. I'm a way better dancer than you. First Kay. of all, you I you can't dance, wait. You dance are you like crazy. It, hold on a second. You do you, a couple little just moves like you, this. Just look just all freaky. Look like you're having. I'm not talking. I watch you dance. I think it's Dirty Dancing from the 1980s. I'm like, holy shit, is that Patrick Swayze? Yeah. Look at this guy. I know you were trained jazz. Are you insane? I know you were trained. Trained. Yes. In classical jazz in the 80s, but classical jazz in the 80s doesn't I work don't on use the stage classical moves in the 80s. The only thing that Jer has is he's younger than me. There's That's a it. day you're going to have to hang up your G string, and I mean. <laughs> well, that day, that thank day God we don't use G strings anymore. <laughs> Jer, you think you're great, and I know I'm greater, so I got to tell you all the time. <laughs> don't you get it? We're in the base competition. Alpha male against alpha male, but I'm the big dog. You're the, the oldest guy I've ever seen strip. That doesn't make when any you difference. Hang it up? You no, that's see that this is where and, you always gotta go. After, Everyone's gotta go try to go low blow. Thanks for letting me get words in. Josh has to be the only one talking. It has to be the loudest. That's and has not to scream because Josh doesn't have Look, to you cut me off again. Yeah, but you're putting Why me down. Why do you fucking cut me because off again? Because you're putting me down. You're trying to get well, to this I, I tried to say something to earlier. I tried to say something ten minutes ago. Let me say another word. Come on, Jerry. What about what about some other stories? It's mostly all in fun. Mostly. When I get back onto the farm and sort of out in the open and surrounded by horses and the type of people that are involved with horses, it feels a bit more like home. I think he's done this before. Oh, yeah? <laughs> He actually wants to be a farrier, like put shoesies on horses. <laughs> Obviously, it's a lot more in depth than that. It's it, farrying pretty much is involved from the shoulder right down to the hoof, health of the legs of the horses, the health of the hooves, how to shape, how to keep their feet healthy, how to keep them well shaped. But in simple man's terms, it's how to put shoes on horses. <laughs> I'll just do a little bit. I don't want to. Just, just, yeah, just follow it around like. I'll just do a little, little yeah. light, and then you, yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, you know, you can always take more. You can't ever glue it back on yeah. when the blood flows. <laughs> Look 
how level he got that for the rats. He's done it before. He's from us. He's his first rodeo. It feels good to get back to that sort of thing, you know, back to the horses and back to those type of people. When I eventually do uh, settle down and decide I want to start an actual family, I'd like to go back to Australia. But, um, I mean, it just depends. I might meet a nice American girl. and It'll depend on her, I suppose. <laughs> Every time people see me, they always go like, oh, like, all these dancers have tattoos. But I don't see any tattoos on you. I'm like, but I have a big one on my back. It's uh, the bird of paradise. It's my mom's favorite flower. One day, she kind of sat me down in front of her, and she was just like, uh, do you love me? I knew it's because like I didn't spend enough time with her. That's why she asked me that question. One day, my mom just passed away. I was, I think, 12. I stood right in front of her, and she was lying on the hospital bed, and like her skin was really yellow and dry, and she was in this like position where like her mouth was open as if she just, the last thing she did was scream in pain. And I think that's, at that moment, I finally got it that, you know, if you care about somebody, you should, you should show it. Because she was a person that really knew how to live. She wanted to experience so many things. I only started living after she died and because she died. Wednesday night is my 30th birthday party. So cool. And that's gonna be epic. We're gonna be drinking, smoking joints, and it's gonna be a limo bus filled with 15 to 20 people, 70% female, 95% strippers. Stripper poles, girls are gonna be upside down, there's gonna be silicone everywhere. We get to the club and we have the VIP booked out just for us, bottle service, and we're gonna take over the place. Everywhere we go, our crew is all muscle guys and hot girls. Everywhere we go, we take over the club. We're the party. I don't really worry about what comes after stripping. I know I have a solid 10 years left, but really 25 years left, but a solid 10 years left. Afterwards, you know, I'm pretty smart. I want to open a business. I have the money to open a business now. I just don't have the motivation. You know, opening a business, you need to put your heart and soul and be there seven days a week, at least for the first two years, for it to be a success. And I like too much my casual lifestyle right now. I'm never gonna quit this job. I'm a stripper.